Alright, yet another day, yet another video, yet another Game Boy Backlight Kit. So, today I've got here this new Cloud Game Store 2.6 inch screen kit. Uh, last time I discussed this, I actually did a video on the Game Boy Pocket version of this kit uh, about a year ago and mentioned that the Game Boy Color version is coming soon and the uh, anticipated release date is a month. It took a little bit longer than a month for it to come out. But, it's finally here. <laughs> and here's what we get. So we get the uh, custom LCD that Cloud Game Store has been using. This is pretty similar to the uh, all-in-one LCD that the older kits use, except just bigger and not transflective. And for those that are wondering, TFT does not mean transflective. Those are two separate things. Um, Transflective has is transflective is uh, when a screen is both reflective and um, has an internal backlight. So a transflective screen, you can turn the backlight off and still view it in normal to good lighting. This is not transflective. It is TFT. TFT refers to the type of screen. Uh, LCD technology used within this screen. Uh, they also say it's an IPS type, which should be pretty good, and it does look pretty decent, uh, at least the one I installed in the pocket did. But anyway, that's enough rambling. Um, we get the screen itself, a lens, some adhesive, the adapter for the PCB um, to the Game Boy Color, and then the adapter PCB itself. It looks extremely similar to every single other kit that they've put out because it is based on the exact same hardware. The only real difference is the software running on the chip. And usually these kits are not cross compatible despite how they may look. Um, I think last time around I tried installing the pocket kit in a color and it sort of kind of worked but the colors were all messed up. I don't I don't expect that to work again this time around. But anyway, pretty neat kit. I like these things. And uh, I guess let's go ahead and get this installed. So this touch sensor, I'm actually not 100% sure which orientation the pins go. And I usually don't like or don't even end up using these touch sensors, but plugs in something like that. We've got a custom screen lens. Notice that the um, location of the image on the lens itself is a little bit lower than some of the other Game Boy Color kits that we're used to. Uh, you notice the top bezel is a lot thicker than the bottom bezel. So unfortunately, these screen lenses might not be compatible with the other kits, despite the fact that the image size itself is about the same. Uh, only because the placement is very, very different. Uh, might be, might be fine with the uh, like the one chip kits with the on-screen display where you can adjust the position. Um, I know with the new Funny Playing kits you can do the same thing. You can adjust the position, but I don't know if it allows you to adjust it that much. And even then, Funny Playing is offering laminated kits, so it's probably not worth bothering anyway because the laminated kit is probably going to give you better results than something DIY like this. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the install here. Tonight's donor is this Game Boy Color that I found in my parts bin. I have no idea what's wrong with it because I took exceedingly bad notes. Um, I put that it needs a speaker. I can see that very clearly. Uh, but in testing, it does seem to work, so we'll just pop in uh, one of the funny playing speakers that I have laying around on my desk. If I recall the context correctly, this thing was working perfectly fine, um, but I needed parts for another Game Boy Color, and this thing just got... Uh, drew the uh, long straw. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get this torn down. And note that this is a solder-free kit, but I will be doing some soldering for the uh, speaker because I think I would like to have audio. And I have somehow misplaced my bits. I 
I don't understand. I just, I just don't understand. Ta-da! All right, so let us get a baseline benchmark for power usage with this thing. I'm gonna jam one screw back in just to hold everything in place. are hair long they could use some trimming but good enough for our purposes Let's get this plug back in and I'm gonna test with Pokemon Silver I'm pretty sure this is the game I usually test with it's been so long since I've done one of these I found my screwdriver bits frickin magnets they were stuck right on the bottom of that thing. All right. Oh, I'm feeling so much better. I thought I was going insane. Okay. So this is an MDP XP. It is a miniware power supply. I'm just gonna use it to provide two and a half volts. The Game Boy Color, which is pretty similar to a Mostly depleted pair of double A's. But we're going to grab a baseline power usage measurement so that we can compare with the new kit. And the stock Game Boy Color, note I have working audio now, at 2.4 volts pulls anywhere from 
looks like 86 milliamps to 93 milliamps, which is pretty typical of Game Boy here. Nothing too fancy. So let's try out the new kit. This rate, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out of the shell. It's just easier to test stock in stock. Put that away. That in there, we don't need this. It's very important to test the kit before we install it. Just trying to get the orientation for this thing. I haven't done one of these in a while and I totally forgot. We want the white line up on the LCD connector, pins down, white line up, snap that closed, and then that'll fold something like that. And then on this side, we want pins down, jam that in, because on the Game Boy Color side it's pins up. And from here, testing, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my power supply again, but for home gamers, there's zero reason you can't just slot this back into the rear half of your shell. Jam a game in there to hold everything in place, and then just drop batteries in there for testing. Um, but again, I'm using my power supply because I want a specific number for my spreadsheet. And it's hard to get these probes on the battery terminals with the rear cover on. A. Hey. And in the exact same place with the exact same game and the same Game Boy Color, on whatever default brightness this is, at 2.4 volts we're pulling 223, nope, 218 to 230 mA. So quite a bit more, not terrible. And then I believe it starts at the max brightness and then it cycles down from there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five uh, levels total. So one, two, three, four, five. And on the lowest brightness at 2.4 volts, I saw max of 205, minimum of 196. So still quite a bit, but not nearly as bad. Uh, and then let's test one more thing. I don't know if this recalls brightness settings. Let's find out. like it resets back to the default every time so if you want to use it on low brightness you'll have to tap it a few times every single time but overall not bad I'm really digging how it looks so far so let's go ahead and continue the install especially since we know everything works now All right. get the power supply out of here And I 
I'm going to disconnect it from the Game Boy Color side. And ooh, that is not a good way to leave that kit. Okay. I can leave that right there though. Alright, so next up we got to do the install. I think I'm just going to use this shell. Uh, oh, before we do that, let's talk elephant in the room. Um, you will have to modify your shell, but let us see if the funny playing laminated shells are a reasonable substitute. I should have tested this before putting away everything. But, oh well. So I believe this should go in there. Just like that. And then I'll have to plug it in again to double check that the alignment is correct. But I think this might actually, ooh. We probably have to cut off this shelf if you want that to work. But it's close enough that I am very confident that this would work. Also, note how much smaller this LCD is than the Q5 LCDs. I grab one of the uh, new funny playing kits here. Maybe get it out of here. You can just see how much physically larger that LCD is compared to something that has the same viewing window area. Um, though, do keep in mind with the funny playing kits, again, this is laminated, um, but you're also getting, see, nice, easy. Um, but with the funny playing kit, you're also getting a 4X scale instead of the 2x scale that you get with this thing. Uh, you get higher max brightness, you get that pixel grid emulation, which I know a lot of you guys do care about. Uh, personally, I don't, but, you know, nice to have options, I guess. But, oh, and while we're at it, let's look at the uh, lens. As you can see, the positioning is quite a bit different but the overall size should be about the same. You can see the width is the same and the placement, like they're, they're both pretty much centered um, horizontally. Vertically, they're different, but again, the place, uh, the size itself is basically the same. I'm gonna jam that back in there, save that for a, another day. We'll take a look at this in another video. This is a new kit compared to the one that I did last time, but whatever. I'll worry about that later. Anyway, the new lens will fit just fine if you want to use one of these shells for this kit. I don't see why it won't work. And there's even less trimming that you have to do, but yep, everything works good. The difference is you will have to uh, self self laminate your LCD, which I guess is actually something I'm interested in trying. So we will save the adhesive for another time. All right. Anyway, that was a fun tangent, but let's get back to this out the buttons before I lose them. We're going to remove the stock screen simply by giving this thing a little twist. The screen will pop out. And then, usually, jam something in there to pop it out. 
the stock screens are quite a bit more resilient. Yeah. Give it a twist to both sides. The stock screens are quite a bit more resilient than anything modern, but also we're replacing this so we don't really care too much if it gets damaged. Nice to not do that, but in the off chance it does get damaged. You know, I'm not gonna cry about it. We will need to remove that. That is the stock dust gasket. It does a pretty reasonable job but unfortunately they're not reusable. Anyway, let us get on with the trimming. Set this stuff aside. We need to cut out this entire bottom shelf and we need to enlarge the viewing window. So in this case, I need to cut out, this is not a good marker for this. This might not be any better. But we need to cut out this area all the way up to here. Not all you can see that. And we need to pop this lens out. There you go, now you can see my markings nice and clear. Um, we also need to make this quite a bit bigger. Uh, one thing we can do is we can place, I don't think this is the right adhesive. I'm pretty sure this is pocket adhesive. Um, Cause that doesn't, doesn't quite fit. All right, uh, I don't know where that came from then. I don't know if my kid even came with adhesive. I'll have to search. Um, the lens, we can use the lens because I have a clear shell. Jam that in there and you'd have to peel off the backing, which I'm not quite prepared to do just yet, but you peel off the backing and then you can mark it from the back how much to trim off. I am just going to eyeball it and then double check later. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim this off with my Dremel because, you know, I have the tool, I'm going to use it. Uh, but the actual opening itself, we're going to do with a knife. Uh, but it looks something like this. The cut itself is off center. It should be wider on the right. And then the bottom goes right about here. And for cutting this part, I'm just going to use a utility knife. And the idea is you just Make a line, and we can always move the cut later. So it's a lot easier if you get it in the right place the first time. And then we will just keep going over these lines. The first line I'm using almost no pressure at all, just enough to leave a mark. If you're using one of these utility knives, you can slide that up to lock the blade in place. Uh, and then I'm just going to keep going over it adding a little bit more pressure each time. Once it gets deep enough, it basically guides itself. Do 
Do that a good half dozen times for each mark. That's what happens when you add too much pressure without making your line first. You veer way off course. We'll just go over that again, but the other way. Oh, it's also probably worth noting, you should do this from the inside, not the outside. Um, I don't know why I did it from the outside. If you do it from the inside, it's a little bit tighter to get in there with the knife, but you can do it, you can do it no problem. Uh, but if you do it from the inside and your knife slips, you'll only mark up the inside of the shell. If you do it from the outside and your knife slips, well, you're marking up the outside of the shell. And we don't want that. I got pretty lucky so far, but... Don't be dumb. And we're going to do quite a few more cuts on this line just because getting this started is going to be more difficult than uh, continuing to break it off. Um, but, ooh, dropping the screws. But as you can see, we're not cutting the top and that's probably why the position is so much lower because it's just easier to only cut three sides instead of four. But now I need me pliers. I'll just grip that and flex it and it'll pop right off. Assuming we did everything right. Notice even though I slipped at that one part, because I didn't score it too deep, it didn't break off there. But that's it. We're done. Well, not done, um, but we've got mostly trimmed up and then we can clean up the rest with the knife. very cognizant of how you are cutting. You always want to think about when you're using a knife like this, you always want to think about where the knife is going to go when it slips. And if that place is something you care about, such as your hand or your Game Boy, then don't cut that way. That's it. I will have to double check the cut with the lens um, when we get down to the install, but that's pretty much it. Uh, now for removing this part, actually let's double check. I'm eyeballing it and it looks like it should fit without even cutting that out. Oh no, we need to cut that out. Okay. Now for removing this part, we can just go at it with flush cutters. And since this part is under the screen lens, we should be able to get away with it. Uh, but I have a better tool to use to do this, so I'm going to use it. Um, 
but it is going to mark up the shell pretty significantly. Uh, a word of note though, if you're going to use flush cutters to cut up your shell, I highly recommend these ones. These are CHP 170 cutters. Uh, they are sold by Hakko, but I don't think they're made by Hakko. These are significantly better than the cheapo generic flush cutters that maybe came with your Ender 3 or, you know, if you search flush cutters and sort by cheapest, those are kind of junk. I have, I have had those break off on me when I'm trying to cut shells. I've never had these break and I've gone through several pairs. I mean, you, you cut something stupid and you wear out the, uh, the cutting edge, but they don't actually break. And I'm not sponsored by them. I just really like these flush cutters and they're like six bucks. So what the hell? Anyway, I'm going to go clean this up on the drum while I'll be right back. All right. Easy peasy. This is why I use the rotary tool. Look at how clean that cut looks. Uh, it could be better. There is still a bit of a lip and the flatter this is cut, the better the install will be. But like I mentioned earlier, now that I'm thinking about that laminated shell, I, I, I can't stop thinking about laminating this kit. Um, so I will probably end up going that route. But anyway, from here, it would be a simple matter of using your adhesive, dropping that in and then dropping your screen in. Um, oh, it is definitely worth double checking that the trim is good. So let's, let's try that. Drop that in. Drop the buttons too, because why the heck not? Definitely worth using the adhesive if you want your install to be permanent. If not, you know, maybe not. Or maybe just use a little bit of adhesive. Maybe we have fast the install. I like that the touch sensor isn't going over the IR window now. Not that I actually use IR, I just like having the option. I am one of the six people with a working Pokemon Pikachu too. And I do have Mystery Gift unlocked. Where's my screwdriver? Always give the batteries a quick roll to make sure that they're seated properly because sometimes they're jammed in a corner and not making good contact. I forgot the IR window after all that chat about IR. But, ta da! As you can see, I did not get my trim right, so I'm really glad I checked this beforehand. It's so close though. I think we could have gone a little bit more on the left, a little bit less on the right, and we need to do a little bit more on the bottom. But this would work if I didn't have standards. Nice, huh? Nice thing too is I'm not seeing any um, like frame dropping, screen tearing, anything like that. Not that I expected any, um, but the early versions of the Cloud Game Store kits, primarily with the smaller LCDs, did have that problem. So it's always nice to double check that that problem has since gone away. And we have. Touch sensor isn't quite registering. A 
but that could be because I'm a little bit dehydrated. Seriously, that's a thing. Um, if you hydrate properly, these generally work a lot better. Also, it helps if it's adhered to the shell. If you can put as little material between you and the sensor as possible, it works better. But anyway, let us carry on. I want to cut from here all the way over to here. And what are you thinking? Should we bring that in a bit? Yeah, just in case. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tear this down again and let's make some modifications. Shoot, I could have left that plugged in. All right, so this bottom one is gonna be super easy. So what we can do, take the knife, lock it, and then take a nice and sharp portion of our blade and just whittle it down. Until I hit my line. That's it. Well, I took a few cuts. Probably want that even though. That's it. Another option we have is our ODB file. Just jam that in there. We can bring this down nice and even. Hell, you can do this from the beginning too if you want. It just takes longer. not recommend using a needle file for this. It'll take so long. In fact, it's also pretty nice for evening out the cuts. probably worth noting, I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, uh, but it's probably worth noting that files, there is a method to the madness and there is a directionality to them, but since I'm not using this on metal, I really don't think I'm going to hurt the file. Um, the idea is you're only cutting on the push stroke, I believe, not the pull stroke, because the teeth are shaped in such that they only cut on one stroke. Um, 
So if you're using this on metal, it is a good way to wear down the teeth, but I don't think I can wear down the teeth on a plastic shell, so I'm not too worried about it. But anyway, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I will be right back. It's messy, so probably don't do that over your desk, but if you're willing to take the time, it is probably going to yield the best results for a shell trim. Ta-da. <laughs> also probably wear a mask. That was dumb of me to not wear a mask. But anyway, yeah, this is just a big bastard file. Well, just bastard file. Um, you can grab these at Harbor Freight. Not the best quality from Harbor Freight, but again, we're using it on plastic. It's good enough. Uh, very glad I grabbed one. There we go. We're all set. Let's get this thing finished. So again, I am going to do this the lazy way and not use any adhesive because I really want to try laminating it. But it should just be a matter of throwing our Game Boy together now. Exactly why you want to wear a mask and probably you want to do this outside because there's a lot of dust everywhere now. That's not volume start and select. Alright. There. For positioning this screen, I believe we just need to jam it all the way up and into the corner, and then everything else should line up. But as you can see, I trimmed way too much on this side. Did not help that I just filed that down, but that should do it. And double check the alignment one more time. And yeah, we're nice and aligned. So yeah, that's exactly it. Jam it into the top right corner, and if you're facing it, it's top right. So I'm sorry. <laughs> From the front, it's the top left. From the side you're going to be working on, it's the top right. But there we go. Still can't get that working. That's a shame. Oh well, I'd leave it at the default high brightness anyway. Don't forget to remove the um, peel. That's what that red line is. Let's try... Flashcart. Oh, actually, let's try this with regular batteries, not my lithium batteries. I don't have any. regular nickel metal batteries. How does this happen? All right, let me go grab some off the charger. Never mind, didn't have to go far. Hey look, yet another Harbor Freight staple. I'm kidding, I don't actually recommend these. But I didn't know that until I had them. And now that I have them, well, they do still work.
Hey, it seems to boot the flashcard just fine. So let's run some tests here. We got the regular Zelda test. Link's Awakening DX. We're testing two things here. Uh, first, we're looking at this guy's chain. And I've explained this about a million times, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain it again. The original Game Boy did not have, actually I don't think any Game Boy for that matter, has a way to render sprites transparently. So a workaround the devs did is they just flicker that on and off and on and off real quick, about as quick as they can. And due to the pixel response time being abysmal on the original screens, it resulted in a nice transparency effect. Um, this screen has significantly better pixel response time but I don't know if this is being worked around in software or if this is just what the screen looks like with this effect, but it is almost, it's so close. It's like 90% there. It's really good. I don't think, I don't think there's much that can be done in terms of improvement. Um, I think it's one of those effects that once you notice what they're doing, it's pretty hard to not see it. But I think anyone who looked at this wouldn't see a problem. I think, I think it would be good. The other thing we're testing, as you can see when I scroll back and forth, the effect kind of peters out a little bit and you see it flickering but slower. That's unfortunate but that's also kind of how the game works. And then the last thing we're looking at the um, pixel response. The other screen kits with the 9380 screens are overdriving the pixels a little bit and that results when they flip back and forth between this brown and this green color that results in some quite significant ghosting of these logs on the screen which I'm not seeing here either so for those that don't understand what the hell I just said this kit passed <laughs> look at a few more things I didn't notice this when I was playing with it earlier so I don't expect to notice it now but let's look at the scrolling bars test Let's see if there's any frame dropping or tearing. And when that S in the word scrolling goes across the left hand side of the screen, the ROM is issuing an LCD reset command to the Game Boy, which on uh, older kits resulted in some pretty heinous uh, frame drops or screen tearing. And I'm seeing none of that here. And all of the bars are moving nice and smooth. Um, you'll have to forgive me if it looks a little bit jittery on camera. The preview window is not looking very promising, but I, I assure you in person it is jelly smooth. It is very nice. Buttery smooth, I think is the uh, actual proper term there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Also, the fact that it's working on junk nickel metal hydride batteries is a very good sign. I think this is the kit to beat at this point. Um, what do we want? Also, if you're installing it in a transparent shell, drop that in there. I mean, you can still see the screen, but there's no like ridiculous light bleed. Let me kill my lights here. Let's see a little bit better. You know, there's a little bit of light bleed, but nothing too terrible. Also, the screen doesn't stick out too far on the bottom, which on one hand, I think is a little bit unfortunate because I think the whole point of a clear shell is that you can see what's inside of it. So I think it's a little disappointing that you can't really see the screen, but I know a lot of you guys like that. Um, there is no pixel effect. This is using linear scaling, but it's only a 2x scale, which means there aren't enough extra pixels to give you that uh, fake pixel grid effect. But, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I'm very pleased with this. Um, I don't know what else I want to test. I don't think there's anything else I want to, anything else I need to test even. It's just good looking. Uh, oh, I suppose we can do the uh, 240p test suite, which I hope I have on my flashcard.
I don't think I have it on my flashcard. That is unfortunate. I don't think this is it. But let's try it. Hmm. Now, I don't know what that is, but it's not what I was looking for. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got. This is a, uh, this is a pretty good kit. I don't know what the stock situation is looking like. Um, normally, Retro Game Repair Shop provides these kits to me for testing out uh, before they decide to stock them. I ended up buying this kit on my own. This isn't, this wasn't provided to me by anyone. Uh, this is just something I wanted to check out and I think it's pretty cool. I will throw a link in the descri description to uh, Cloud Game Store if you want to try grabbing one of these kits for yourself. It is on AliExpress. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm digging it. Oh, that's a problem. screen just went black. Now, it could have been the Game Boy. Game Boy could have froze because I have been fondling the batteries back here. I don't know where my battery cover went. I'll just use that one for now. Oh, that one doesn't fit. Oh, there it is. And it works fine on a reboot. I'm thinking it just froze because I've been fondling it. I Keep in mind, I haven't actually screwed this thing together yet. It's just kind of flopping in the breeze. But I guess let's play this a couple minutes. I'm going to plug in my phone because I didn't realize that my battery is not charged. It's at 14% currently. I'll just play this for a minute. It's a level 7 B drill. That's neat. Should use a master ball on it. Oh no, it broke free. Probably because it's not weakened at all. I think B drill has a really, really high multiplier. Oops. So, whatever. Bye, B drill. I'm not going to save this game anyway, it doesn't matter, it's on my flash cart, not the actual... Wow, it even leveled up my Quagsire. Wow. Yeah, I think this thing's pretty good. I'm very pleased with it. And notice I just handled my Game Boy very roughly and I didn't have the same problem I had last time. Now that I have a battery cover on. So, fairly certain that was the issue. But there we go. That's all I've got. Uh, again, I will send some, I'll shoot some links into the description if you guys want to check this thing out. I'm very pleased with it. Um, word of warning though. When it comes to backlight kits, there's always something new right around the corner. So if you're looking at this thing going, man, it's really missing that one feature that I really like. Um, maybe wait, there's there's always going to be something. If you need something right now, which it's a Game Boy, I guess no one actually technically needs anything. Then, you know, go for it. It's, it's a definitely a good kit, but... Um, you know, as always, there's there's always going to be something new. If my my wiki page is any indication, we get a new kit basically every other month at this point uh, for each console, and it's incredibly difficult to keep up with. Just you know, new versions of the same kit or 
new kit maker entirely, you know? It is what it is. But anyway, very pleased with this. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps. And uh, I guess I'll catch you next time when I'm doing some freaky deaky stuff with this kit.